Hello there, this is Melissa Furness, and I'm here in County Kilkenny, Ireland, at Shankill Castle, here to be your tour guide through my art installation that I've put outdoors in the Shankill Castle ruins. Um, so, I'll be running the camera, so that will be my voice that you'll be hearing, and I'll tell you something a little bit about uh, what I've been doing here while I've been on residence for the past month in Ireland. So, uh, to start, what I did originally was to actually take a little visit to Dublin, and I visited the Archaeological Museum, and I found some different artifacts, um, and created a drawing on linen of these different artifacts that I found in the exhibition. So this is a little bit of a map, hopefully that's in some kind of focus. Um, but there's 20 different pieces that I have cut apart and embedded here on site as artifacts. So that's what the little bits of red spots that you see here. So I'll back up just a little bit so you can see the entrance. Um, this is, you know, the gateway to the ruins and the cemetery here at Chang Hill. So I'll take a little walk through. So the first artifact is here. So as I go through, I'll try and do my best to do some explaining as well. Um, so what you see here is a fragment of some patterns that were actually um, found in the Archaeological Museum. These are tile patterns that I created on the linen along with gouache and pencil. And the whole idea is to embed them into the environment and to um, see what happens over time as they get weathered and, and the environment grows around it. Here's a second artifact. This is a, a comb. So the different objects that you see in the installation are actually from a special, special exhibition um, at, the, at the museum. And this was a museum about um, the Nordic invasion of the Irish Sea. And this was significant to me because my last name, Furness, um, is actually Norwegian. And we were one of those invaders, unfortunately. So actually on the UK side, in the Lake District, you'll see a town called Berwyn Furness, which is from my last name. So going in here, you have another site. Um, this is a, an, an artifact which is just patterning as well, another fragment of patterning. Um, so what I wanted to do with the different elements that I chose was to choose, you know, certain personal items that they had historically. Um, this piece that I have here is actually quite significant. This tombstone is really interesting if you can read the inscription on it. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video or not. Um, uh, but it says, Here lieth the body of Mary Cody, buried the day of the February the 31st. 18, 1782. And so the interesting part of it is that February 31st obviously doesn't exist. And so, you know, I was talking to um, one of the owners of this place, and they mentioned that the possibility of perhaps that, you know, perhaps she had committed suicide and this was the way that she could be buried in consecrated grounds. Who knows? But I think it's an interesting story. So going along the path here, um, there are several other artifacts that I've placed on site. Um, here's another one. These are actually two brooches that are sort of pointing towards one another. Um, and this is in front of this other headstone, which is pretty much covered in vines and moss, so you can hardly even see it. Um, and then as you walk through, here's kind of an overview of the cemetery itself, um, you'll see different pieces in between. There are several combs that I took that I was interested in, you know, how the uh, spikes of the comb, some of them were missing, some of them were not, and how um, that has kind of a sense of, I suppose, um, tension or urgency to it, like these sort of spikes that are there or not there. 
Um, so walking through, here's another piece. This is a scale, half of a scale. So I put one half on the exterior of the structure and one half on the interior of the structure. This is work really is a lot about, you know, this notion of burying the past. And what I do with my work is to um, take something that's more of a public history and transform it into something that's more of a private history or private narrative. And so I suppose in this sense I'm also, you know, taking my own sense of private narrative, but also, you know, the narrative of these people that are here in the cemetery that might have lived here at one time, I find really fascinating as well. Here is um, half of a bracelet, and on the end of the bracelet there's this clasp, which is interesting. It's um, two heads sort of biting one another. And you see also how the pattern itself really mimics the thing, the choices that I've made, and also even the vines and the things that you see in this space. So there's 20 of these artifacts, and I did have them together a few days ago. I cut them apart, and I did um, try to organize it purposefully to be sort of based off of the Book of Kells, which I also saw when I was in Dublin. Um, here's the other half of the bracelet embedded in some moss here. So the green here is really fantastic and amazing, something I really love. It's a little bit closer view, that's better. So walking it around, there's another one in between these two. It's also really fascinating how the headstones sort of lean in and out towards one another and away from one another. And I, I find that interesting how these objects create almost a narrative within themselves. And here's more of the patterning. <clears throat> and part of the reason that I include the pattern in the work is really because I'm interested in um, sort of recycling cycles of life, I suppose, and how history repeats itself in some way. So we're kind of going around the side of the structure now. And here's another fragment of the pattern with this headstone. So I just, I, I really truly love how, you know, these bits of, you know, even just you know, the, the sticks lying around on the ground and how much it really weaves its way into the pattern itself. It almost seems like it was meant to be here. And then down here you see another piece that we're approaching. This is another long comb embedded in another great area of moss. Hopefully you can see that. So, the title of the piece I'm calling Disentanglement, so you can see kind of the reasoning behind the combs a little bit. <sighs> and then there, looking up, it's sort of pointing towards the structure here. And then we'll walk around the structure of the church and see what else we find. Here's another piece of pattern. So ideally, you know, I was thinking a lot about the fact that it rains here. And honestly, we've had some of the best weather here in Ireland since I've been here, which is <coughs> really great for traveling. But, you know, for my piece, I was just really hoping that it would rain more. So the whole idea is to um, leave this on site for the next month or so and see how these pieces might transform a little bit more. I mean... I would love if the moss grew into the pieces even more. Because this is uh, about day three of them being on site. And this one is another strip of patterning that really blends well with the, the rocks and the stones of the structure.
And if you look upwards, like here's the window going into the old church. It's so beautiful. Okay, so I've nearly made it all the way around. Okay, so here we are entering um, the structure of the church. And inside here I have several artifacts as well. Um, if you go immediately to the left when you step inside, there is this piece, which is actually a hole within which the, the smaller pieces that you saw in a grey stone out in the yard there, in the graveyard, um, fit into. And then over here, by the crumbling wall, we have a rope that is sort of meshed together with uh, these sticks, which had been um, part of a, a necklace that I saw at the museum. And I was interested in how this sort of reaches from the out, the exterior into the interior, and also the relationship between that and some of these sticks that you see next to it and around it. <coughs> so the piece itself has, you know, quite a life to it. It was, you know, me working on it in the studio, but now you see it cut apart and embedded in the space. And I feel like this really gives it a lot of life and a lot of meaning for what I was going for. Here's a buckle uh, in front of this other gravestone, which has some fantastic moss growing on it. And then down towards this end we have a few more. So here are some shears, actually. Um, I kind of like how they're they're both kind of like this sort of cutting apparatus, which is also why I put it here with this broken headstone. Um, but they also, to me, um, when the piece is together as a whole and there you're standing them upright, it almost looks like, you know, a compass. And I was thinking a lot about, you know, what affects you in terms of your own sort of, your own compass of travel or where you live. Um, and that also relates as well to the sort of circle of the pattern that you see here. <coughs> and then we have over here the other half of the scale that I was talking about, along with these rocks. And then the final piece is one comb here. Another really long comb. Um, so the whole, the goal here then is to let this sit here on site for a month. I was here creating it for a month, sitting on site for a month, and then have it shipped back to the United States and then when I um, receive the pieces, the plan is to stitch them back together, almost like, um, you know, a quilt. And then it will return to having some sense of looking a little bit like the Book of Kells, but also will have my embellishments with them. And, you know, with that, you know, I was thinking a lot about how artifacts work and how they change over time and how we respond to them. And so that's really what I'm very much interested in with the work. And um, yeah, so then they will actually, the p entire piece will head to um, uh, near outside of LA to Palm Springs to a gallery called Arch Archangel Gallery where I'll be showing the final piece along with some cast iron sculptural elements that are actually being created by a friend of mine who is also an Irish artist. So really, I think it's fantastic to respond to sight, and I've had an amazing time here, and hope that you enjoyed my little tour. Thanks.